Original audio drama from the Questus Theatre. The Intruder by Peter Gould. Just money, but good taste. That'll be her. <laughs> Definitely not him. I wouldn't mind living here. Jesus! Oh, what are you? The... Oh, come on, Dave. Stay calm. No need to panic. I know you're in there. I'm warning you. I'm calling the police. Oh, shit. Whoever you are, I'm coming in. Okay, uh, you're probably wondering... Who the hell are you? Nice pyjamas, Jerry. You're not getting away with this, you thieving bastard. Oh, not the poker, Jerry. That's really not necessary. I'm warning you. One step closer. Look, uh, let's try to stay calm, shall we? What have you taken? I- I- it's not what you think, Jerry. Don't try to run. You're not going to escape. I-, I love these old Edwardian villas. I-, I see you've kept all the original features... Some people just rip them out. A great shame, if you ask me. What? I always think a dado rail adds a touch of class to a house. Dado rail? And those plaster mouldings on the ceiling. Always a good selling point. How do you know my name? Sorry? You called me Jerry. I see you are. Jerry. The merchant banker. Big job in the city. Expensive suits. Porsche in the driveway. Have you been snooping on us? It's normal in my line of work, Jerry. A burglar? Checking to see if there's anything worth stealing? No, I'm a builder. I tarp these places up before the owners sell. Usually for a fat profit. It's a good business to be in right now. Your face is familiar. Kitchen extensions, patios, conservatories and loft conversions. My speciality, actually. Loft conversions? Everyone's doing it. Us builders call this neighbourhood Loft City. (laughs) I know you from somewhere. Price of property the way it is at the moment. Why would you go to the trouble and expense of moving when you can extend? What's your name? Dave. Dave what? Dave X. (sighs) Shit. You're him. Look, it it was an accident. He was just cycling home. It was late. You mowed him down. In your van. Our son, Simon. It, It was very dark. That road isn't properly lit. He was 17. His whole life ahead of him. He was getting good grades, had a place at medical school. He was going to be a doctor. Look, I paid for my mistake. The police measured the skid marks. They said you were doing 50 at least. Oh, believe me, Jerry, there hasn't been a day. Jerry! And now you're out. After a few months... Special circumstances. Stay back, Lisa. I've got this under control. What special circumstances? Oh, uh, Dave's son was dying, Jerry. Cancer. So he was released early? On compassionate grounds. Hello, Lisa. Nice to see you. Ryan was the same age as our Simon. Hello, Dave. It spread very fast. Lisa, Dave... At least it was quick at the end. You were so brave. You all were. How the hell do you know all this? I went to see Dave in prison. They call it restorative justice, bringing offenders and their victims together. Or the families of their victims. Lisa's therapist thought it would help. Jesus! I paid for those sessions, 50 quid an hour. I think meeting helped both of us. I I was going to tell you, Jerry, but you weren't here. I just moved out for a while. We both needed some space. Bang out of order. Who are you to criticise me? Dave's wife supported him. It wasn't easy for Jan trying to keep everything together while he was inside. Jan? You've met her? Uh, Lisa came to the funeral. I thought it was a nice gesture. Me and Jan invited her back to ours for a cup of tea. You've been to his house? Are you crazy? It was a funeral, Jerry. The funeral of their son. You remember what that was like for us? 
The bastard didn't come to Simon's funeral, did he? I was a bit tied up with the police. So why have you broken into a house in the middle of the night? I don't know, really. I, I just wanted to see where you lived. What business is it of yours? I, I just feel like we've got a lot in common. You were going to rob us. Jerry, put that poker down before someone gets hurt. <sighs> where do you live? You look ridiculous. On the Waterside Estate. Ho, oh, oh, ho, well. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> it's not as bad as all that, Jerry. Oh, I can see why he came here. Rich pickings for someone who lives on the waterside. I don't suppose I could have a glass of water. Water? Would you prefer a beer? Oh, great. Let's all have a drink. You know, really get to know one another. Thank you. Uh, my mouth is a bit dry. There you are. Much appreciated. Oh, how about some nibbles as well? Lisa? I told you, Jerry. Put down that poker. Did you invite him here? Actually, no. She didn't, Jerry. You can't blame her this time. In fact, I did say we shouldn't see one another again. And I completely understand why you said that. Again? You said again? How many times have you seen him? In prison? Just the once. And at the funeral, obviously. Of course, my wife was there, Jan. And there was that time in the town centre. That wasn't planned. No, <laughs> we just bumped into one another. That new gastro pub, first time I'd been in it there. It was lunchtime. Steak and ale pie. I don't care what was on the fucking menu. It was tasty. It sounds like you've been getting a taste for my wife. How typical that you would assume the worst. You were the one who moved out, Jerry, be fair. You fancy her, don't you? My wife. Is it true about you and your personal assistant? How dare you? What's Lisa said to you? Dave, no, don't go there. How about you, Lisa? Do you like a bit of rough from the council estate? No, it's not like that. Leave her alone, Jerry. So what's this all about? Turning up here in the middle of the night. It's hard to explain. I just feel I can talk to Lisa about things. You talk? She listens. I don't think Jan understands. Not like Lisa. We all need someone who listens, Jerry. Have you forgotten what he did? How come you're prepared to forgive him, but not me? You tried to make out it was all my fault. The mother who let her teenage son go out cycling after dark, putting him in danger. You were drinking a bottle of wine a night. Did you even notice he'd gone out? You were never here. Always working late. One excuse after another. Then, after... After it happened, you moved out. Just when I needed your support. We agreed we needed some time apart, but now I'm back. And I'm supposed to be grateful? We're trying to make a fresh start. We agreed to give it a go, didn't we? But you're still finding ways to blame me. I need you, Lisa. I can't get through this without you. And I need someone who understands what I have been through. She does, Jerry. That's what we talk about. You? A shoulder to cry on? I don't think so. Jerry, there is no need to do this. Dave didn't mean any harm. It's time to put an end to this nonsense. Police? He wasn't going to steal anything. Were you, Dave? I wasn't. Hello, there's a burglar in my house. Jerry! The Sycamore Gardens, number 73. Maybe I should just go. Yes, you'd better leave now. Uh, he's got a knife. Come quickly. A knife? This is why we have to stop meeting, Dave. Oh, I'm so sorry, You Lisa. can't see me again. Oh, but I need to talk to someone. I know. I need to talk to you. They'll be here in a couple of minutes. There's a patrol car in the area. Jerry, what have you done? They said I was not to approach the intruder. Intruder? He's not an intruder, Jerry, and he doesn't have a knife. We're not in any danger. He broke into our house in the middle of the night while we were asleep. Who knows what he might do? You're making me sound like a serial killer. You are a killer. You killed our son. Ran him down in your van. It was an accident, Jerry. A, a terrible accident. And you've forgiven him, Lisa. He killed Simon and you're meeting him in the pub for lunch. It's unbelievable. He's been through the same thing as us. His son got cancer and died. Well, I'm pleased. Now he knows what it's like to lose a son. Pleased? How can you say that? It's justice. An eye for an eye. Well, that sounds like Old Testament justice. I was going to kill him. What? After it happened, I kept thinking how I was going to do it. You never talked to me about this. <laughs> You'd already hit the bottle. After a while, I realised drink wasn't going to help me. I just wanted to hurt him. I get that. Uh, I was angry when, when Ryan was diagnosed. Bloody angry. But it was a disease. <laughs> Who do you take that out on? The, the doctors? The hospital? The government? You killed Simon. 
You were responsible, nobody else. Except me, of course. The alcoholic wife. I was going to wait for you outside the court. You were out on bail, and I had a knife. <gasps> a knife? Jesus! I was ready to accept the consequences. A skilled defence lawyer would have made a good case for leniency. Even if it meant a few years inside, it would have been worth it. But, 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 but you didn't do it, uh, and justice took its course. It was all over quicker than I expected, because you pleaded guilty, hoping to get a reduced sentence. Two years. Bang. Take him down. You look so shocked, and Jan was crying. It was a hunting knife. I'll show you. Are they even legal? I found it in one of those stores that sell things for the outdoors. A gear for people who go hiking and camping. That kind of thing. Oh, my God. Swedish carbon steel. Very durable. Razor sharp. They don't sell them to kids, obviously, but if you're over 18, no problem. You know, if you're middle-aged, well-spoken and wearing a nice suit, you can get away with pretty much anything. Terry, you, 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 need, you need to think about this. You, on the other hand, well, the police wouldn't be too surprised to find a knife on a criminal, would they? What? A man who broke into our house after midnight, especially as I was careful to mention the knife when I called 999. Jerry, please, this is a terrible mistake. And you had a motive, didn't you? You were looking for some kind of revenge. You wanted to get back at us because you went to prison. I mean, why else would you be here? They'll see through it. They won't be fooled by a story like that. I was lucky to be able to take the knife off you. It was just unfortunate that you got stabbed in the struggle. An accident. A tragic accident. That's what happens when people like you carry knives. You've forgotten Lisa. She's going to see everything. She'll tell the police what really happened. Give evidence against her husband. Send him to jail. Do you really think so? Maybe she'd like the opportunity, given the way you've treated her. I'll take the chance. Open up. Lisa, would you mind letting in the police? Oh, Jerry, please. Go on, before they break down the door. Wait, I'm coming. Well, Dave, looks like it's just you and me. In The Intruder by Peter Gould, Dave was played by David Havata, Jerry was played by David Erdos, and Lisa was played by Amanda Benzikri. James Connor was the sound engineer and Gavin Jones the sound designer, with original music by Alita Hafner. Victoria Smith was the assistant director and it was directed by Lucy Ailey Parker. This was an original audio drama for the Questers Theatre.